Hi, this is The Greatest Story Ever Played. I'm Dan, and I'm joined by Connor from Lore Party. Hello, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm great. Happy to be here. Uh, psyched to talk Ghost of Tsushima. I feel like I haven't uh, I haven't been able to geek out about it in a while, and the Iki Island DLC in particular, I guess, gave me a chance to uh, pick it back up after a while. I haven't played it in a while, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. It's a really cool story, really cool uh next chapter in the uh, story of Jin Sakai. So, yeah, I'm psyched. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. Really stoked to get to talk more Ghost of Tsushima, specifically, like you said, hitting up the DLC Iki Island together. Yeah. Also glad to have you back on. Um, if people don't know about you or Lore Party or the work you do, uh, do you want to give people a little bit of info about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Happy to. <clears throat> Uh, my name's Connor Howard. I'm the uh, I'm one of the senior producers of the Lore Party Podcast Network. We're a uh, we're a group, a collective, you could say. Of we we like to think high quality shows about video game storytelling, but we've had uh, several uh, spinoffs lately. We have a uh, we also are known for producing Gom Jabbar, the Dune podcast, uh, all about Frank Herbert's uh, sci fi universe. We recently spun off a, a show about Moon Knight called Night Knight Spectre. It's kind of a companion show for the new Marvel, sorry, uh, <laughs> uh, Disney Plus series. Yeah, all, all kinds of stuff. You know, Winds Howling about uh, The Witcher. We have a Hazel Story, a podcast all about the saga comics uh, or graphic novels. <laughs> and uh, yeah, too many to name at this point. I'm all, I'm all actually <laughs> honestly losing track of them. But no, there's we have a pretty expansive network. Uh, we're all very... We're all, all of us on the lower party team are very crazy about uh, video game storytelling and just uh, nerd culture in general, all, all that cool stuff. And uh, yeah, we're actually right now on lower party, what I'm doing specifically, uh, I and my, uh, me and my co-hosts, Jaden and Kevin, we've been watching the Halo series on Paramount Plus and sort of recording our thoughts and reactions and doing, doing kind of recap episodes so uh, definitely check that out if you're curious about the Halo show, uh, or if you're watching it along with us. You know, see what uh, see what our takes have been. Uh, feel free to come at us on Twitter about the, <laughs> about our uh, opinions on Halo. Uh, no, it's it's been fun. And then uh, yeah, we'll actually be starting season ten of the normal, uh, I guess the normal the regular programming of uh, Lore Party's uh, episodes will be kicking off later this month and uh later uh in may and so we'll be running throughout the summer with uh season 10 yeah so lot, lots going on we're, we're staying busy over there yeah you really are i feel like each time i talk to you a new show spun spins off uh, <laughs> on the network which is great like i feel sure. like there's really great things going on there and i feel like especially in the last i don't know year or two it just feels like being able to just stack new things and okay here's a new uh universe worth going even deeper on it has a show now or a movie or whatever let alone uh all the games that you guys have covered over the years i feel like Mm because you guys are probably like getting close to 200 episodes just in the main feed Uh, anyway or something it's a lot like yeah that sounds right (laughs) (laughs) there's a lot of content out there so yeah if you haven't listened to Lore Party, if you haven't listened to any of those shows, like go check that out. There's definitely something for you there. Yeah. I've really enjoyed it. You can find us on, uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, pretty much anywhere you get your shows. Uh, our, on Twitter, we're at lore underscore party. You can find our link tree there. Find all of our shows that way. And uh, yeah, don't, don't be a stranger. Oh, yeah. Awesome. No, thanks for sharing that. And I'll put those links, too, inside the notes. So if uh, you want to check out what Connor and Lore Party is doing, definitely go do it. So, cool. Okay. So, yeah, as we said, we're here to talk about Ghost of Tsushima's DLC, Iki Island. Uh, With that, I guess I think we need to just give sort of a catch-all spoiler warning, since this is a Mm -hmm. DLC that really takes place after the main game, I would say. Right. We'll probably spoil the main game some, but, uh, you know... (laughs) Yeah, I guess don't come down this way if uh, you haven't played the main game or if you do care about spoilers, because I think to be able to talk about Jin's journey, um, there will be probably parts where we do reflect on what happened in the main game. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there before we dive in. So, And I guess with that, normally I knew we do non-spoiler sections here, but since it's a DLC and we're jumping in in the middle, we're just going to ignore that because, I don't know, we're picking up a story partway through. So um, <laughs> yeah, with that, I guess we'll just dive into Iki Island. Um, Connor, would you want to read that description for us? Absolutely, yeah. So, in the main game, uh, Jin's kind of 
overarching journey has to do with opposing the Mongol uh, occupation of Tsushima Island alongside his uncle, who happens to be the Jito of Tsushima, which is kind of like governor. He's kind of like the uh, representative of the shogun on that island. So uh, his his uncle, Lord Shimura, who's the Jito, uh, is kind of like... Uh, Jin's father figure in a lot of ways, uh, but throughout the course of the main game, they sort of have a disagreement over uh, how to fight the Mongols. You know, Jin has learned that, you know, to be truly effective against the invaders, sometimes the samurai code has to be bent a little bit to uh, be flexible enough and adaptable enough to react to the Mongols' unorthodox tactics. Uh, so, and that, that causes a rift between Jin and his uncle, Lord Shimura, and that, uh, unfortunately that comes to a head at the end of the main game where they have a duel. It's a, you know, it's a, uh, a bloody, uh, battle to the death, you know, sword on sword, and, uh, Jin, the player, comes out on top, and I, I believe the main game ends with a choice to either take Shimura's life, kind of give him a warrior's death, you know, end it for, 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 for good, or you can all, or you can choose to spare him, which would be sort of a yeah, the way depending on how you look at it, that's kind of like the final insult, you know. To, for a, a samurai like Lord Shimura, that's the final insult is to defeat him in battle, but not give him warrior's death. And so it's kind of like, but for from Jin's perspective, it's no, I'm not killing you. You're my you're you're my uncle. I love you. So it's yeah, it's it's a it's a big choice. But at some point after that climactic, you know. Uh, I guess uh, that climactic duel with Lord Shimura, Jin eventually, you know, he's on his own at that point. The Mongol invasion's been sort of broken at that point, or at least it's it's at least been uh, weakened. So sometime after that, Jin comes across a community of villagers on Tsushima Island who have apparently completely lost their minds. They've been driven insane by some kind of poison uh, that, you know, the Mongols describe as sacred medicine. And uh, it was kind of force-fed to them by a mysterious new group of Mongols. Like, they haven't been really seen before on Tsushima uh, that Jin had never encountered before. They're, they call themselves members of the uh, Eagle Tribe, uh, led by a Mongolian warlord named Ansar Khatun, also known as the Eagle. So this is a person, a, a chieftain, who uh, calls herself the Eagle and, you know, leaves notes and messages everywhere and seems to think pretty highly of herself, you know? <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> yeah. So this mysterious new figure uh, causing trouble on Tsushima, but apparently uh, the Eagle tribe is mostly concentrated on the neighboring island called Iki. Iki Island is a tiny little patch of sand to the uh, uh, southeast of Tsushima proper. So Jin figures that you know, the eagle is conquering Iki Island, uh, and if I don't stop her there, she'll come to Tsushima next and kind of spread her poison and her madness all over, so I better go there and stop her at, on Iki. So that's kind of what he decides to do, but Iki Island has uh, a bit of personal history for Jin. <laughs> it turns out that um, that's where his father, Kazumasa, actually died uh, years prior because he had led sort of a samurai campaign to bring law and order to Iki Island because it's mostly a pirate den. Like, Iki Island's just crawling with raiders and smugglers and whatnot. Uh, and to, mo to, a, to most, you know, for the most part, it still is. So that's uh, where Jin's journey takes him next. Well said. So th this gives us our real setup of what we're getting into. Uh, Tsushima Island, by the time uh, Jin leaves, is mostly resolved. And I think too Jin doesn't really have a place there anymore. He's like, I don't, yeah. you know, after becoming the ghost, like uh, the samurai don't want me here. And in fact, they're mad at what I did, even though I saved the island. Um, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and so he, it almost is like, okay, where will my journey take me next? And he runs into right. these people and heads off to Iki Island for uh, his next thing. I guess background on the game, too. The DLC is also made by Sucker Punch Productions, who made the main game, also mm -hmm. the infamous series, among other things. So, um, Sly Cooper, too. Yeah, Sly Cooper. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, yeah, Sucker Punch has done good things. This is another entry to that. So Absolutely. I guess before we dive into Iki Island itself, though, I did want to give an opportunity just to um talk a little bit about the main game so what did you think about uh ghost of tsushima kind of at large the main game oh man yeah uh in general i i just gotta i i do have to say ghost of tsushima was 
probably my personal game of the year in 2020 when it came out and that's that's saying a lot because it was it was tough competition that year i think 2020 is also when uh doom eternal came out which is like probably a close second place for me and uh the last of us part two came out around that time which also one of my favorite games that year uh so yeah but but something about ghost of tsushima just for me it left a mark on me in terms of open world game design I remember playing Ghost of Tsushima for the first time and just having that epiphany. Like, this is the most vibrant and engaging and kind of lifelike open worlds I've ever played in. And it felt so uh, natural. It felt so real and detailed and contained. Like, some other open worlds are just overwhelming, you know, they're just, they're too big. There's too much going on. There's too much to do and see. I, I and you know, but you you still want that sense of wonder and open ended adventure. And Ghost of Tsushima nailed that balance for me. It was like it's just big enough. There's just enough to do and see and places to go. And even just making your way through this world is an experience in and of itself. Like, you know, sometimes you're just navigating an open world trying to get to the next. You know. The next thing you want to check off your to-do list, but with Ghost of Tsushima, it's like I really enjoyed the just the the downtime of going from point to point, uh, and just living in that world. So, yeah, the animations were on point. The story was great. The combat is amazing. I love just fighting dudes and you know hacking them apart with a katana. It's just <laughs> it's so much fun. Everything about it was so finely tuned. I felt like so. Uh, yeah, no, it, it was the whole package for me. It was like a ten out of ten, basically. Uh, couldn't couldn't praise it enough. Yeah, totally agree. I I was super impressed with it. I agree. Sometimes open world games too just can be too big, where they're like daunting, or um, it can get really repetitive, where it feels like copy and pasted almost after a mm-hmm. while, where you're like, oh, you're doing the same thing. Like one thing that was big in Ghost of Tsushima was like there'd be villages that would have maybe I don't know three or four people who are held prisoner and you need to like you know kill the mongols that are there and free the prisoners and something i was really surprised by in ghost of tsushima was going and doing that was fun the whole time like once i finished the game i just kept doing that for a while and like clear i didn't end up clearing all of them but i did maybe like half the island just because i wanted more of the game afterwards which is wild like you know that could feel like a chore in a lot of games but in ghost of tsushima it didn't and instead it was highly engaging uh let alone like you said with the stories or like um i can go either way on side quest in a lot of games the side quest in this to get your like companions 1000 percent worth it they were so fun mm-hmm. yeah yeah every everything in the game were thing it was you know stuff i wanted to do like there are a lot of open world games where i'll find i'll find out about side content and i'll try it and i'll kind of make that decision myself like nah, i'm not gonna seek these out like I'm, I, I, I have tried this particular type of side quest or side activity, and uh, it's not that exciting for me. So I'm just going to ignore it and focus on the main story. I've made that decision in so many open world games. Uh, <coughs> Ubisoft, <coughs> um, <laughs> in particular. Uh, but no, with with Ghost of Tsushima, like I got hungry for every part of the game. Like I wasn't just looking for. The main quest. I wasn't just looking for a specific type of side quest. All of the uh, the tales of Tsushima, as they're called, uh, and the specific ones for your kind of side characters and friends of Jin. Uh, those were all things I sought out and was like looking forward to doing. And like the you know the shrines, the bamboo strike puzzles, the haikus, like ev- everything uh, you could do. I wanted to just you know hunt down and do. And I, so yeah, I I think I got a hundred percent clearance of the island just out of just out of like, oh, God, I, I need more, I need more. So, no, it was, it was very fulfilling. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. So, um, I guess, yeah, for people coming in, you know we both came in loving this game. And so, when the DLC came out, uh, I think mm. that both of us probably were like, okay, an opportunity for more of this, I'm interested. And, uh, you know, just recently we finally got around to checking it out ourselves. So, that's true. Uh, yeah, let's. Um, I guess with that, we can jump into kind of the recap of Icky Island and talk about what happened there. So, um, like we said uh, at the beginning, the game really begins with an investigation on this town where uh, it's rumored to have been attacked that the villagers 
uh, have lost their minds. So not just that the Mongols came and killed everyone, but instead uh, that people are incapacitated, what happened. And you go there and you find that that's what happened. People are just like uh, sitting on the ground. Uh, they're, it's not like gibberish. Instead, they're saying words, but they're just like so frightened and um, almost can't react to you. Like they're just gone. Yeah. When people, when people like kind of, when when Jin tries to talk to these people who have apparently survived a Mongol attack, they respond to him, but they just don't really make sense. Like they kind of spout, you know, incomprehensible screams. They they seem like they're afraid of things. Like they're, it seems like they're seeing something in their minds that is just terrifying to them. And so Jin isn't really able to make sense of it. His his friend Yuna, who he meets in the main game, kind of a. Uh, a thief and survivor who's had his back for a while now. She kind of is one of those people who sort of comes with him to check it out and sort of has his back, but she doesn't end up following him to Iki Island immediately. Uh, so it, it, it just kind of like she has a cameo, I guess at the beginning of the DLC, but, but yeah, she's, she and Jin are kind of like the two people left on Tsushima who are looking out for people like this. So it, and and so but yeah, when they when they get there, they're not really sure what to do because like these people aren't like wounded; they're not in immediate danger from Mongol attack. They're just they're just losing their minds. So it's like, what do we do about this? It's kind of unclear at, uh, at the beginning there. Yeah, who can help them? What what could right. make them better? And um, then Jin kind of investigates a little further, and he finds some of the soldiers that did this, and you mm. get uh, introduced with your new, uh, I guess, flair that Iki Island brings, which is there's this, like, priest who's, like, chanting, and it basically yeah. makes the soldiers, like, hyper-aggressive. And mm -hmm. so instead of, like, you know, a normal soldier might get tired after, like, trying to attack you a few times, these ones aren't. Instead, they're just, like, 100% the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, they're really pumped up. They take, they they just don't die. Like you can just you hit them over and over and over again, and their health is just buffed to insanity. So, yeah, these I guess these like Mongol shaman or whatever they have like a chant that yeah, just it's it's kind of it, the game makes it clear to you. You definitely want to cl uh, kill the shamans first, or the other Mongols will be almost impossible to kill. It's crazy. Yeah, and the shamans themselves aren't just guys who are, like, standing there who won't fight. Like, they've got a big staff. So if mm -hmm. you, like, try to fight them, like, and come too close, they're, like, ready for it. So it's not just like, a, oh, kill the guy that's far away, um, but it's yeah. easy. Instead, they're also hard. So it's a pretty chaotic scene um, when you first encounter this. Jin does manage to kill them all, and he gets to, uh, I think, the shaman and has them like injured and is about to kill them and he's like you know where are you from what is this, all this and he finds out that they're from icky island and that this has all been going on down there already and so this gives Jin kind of his mission okay if icky island's getting wrecked with this if the eagle's doing this there like i can't let them be successful there and come back here like i've got to go kill them at the source kind of thing right uh, but the, the, what's complicated about going to Iki Island, though, is like we like we touched on, uh, there's a personal history to Iki Island. Like, so Jin knows he has to go there to kind of cut off this thread of the source, but uh, he remembers that Iki Island is where his father died, and he also knows that the Sakai name is not popular there because mm. of how his father sort of subjugated the people there and waged war on the pirates and. Uh, there was a lot of collateral damage, uh, as we'll find out in some of the memories and stuff. So it's uh, it's not an easy, it's not a simple matter of going to Iki Island, and Jen knows that. Yeah, not at all. It, it, it's interesting, too, with that, is that he can't, like, um, not that he maybe relied on it in Ghost of Tsushima, but after a while, like, once he's mythologized as the ghost, like you know, people just want to rally around him. He, it's like, you know, Jin yeah. of the people, the ghost, you yeah. know, all of that. Um, he doesn't have that rep now. Like, he's right. going somewhere else. They, they don't know who the ghost is. Um, right. And also, right. they don't... On, on Tsushima, he's... Jin Sakai is, like, respected, and, you know, everyone everyone knows. But, yeah, also, the, the legend of, quote, the ghost hasn't spread to Iki yet, so he'll be a stranger there. So it's kind of like he can't rely on that, that fame, but also he wants to... He'll have to sort of hide himself a little bit uh, when he gets there. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, he can't use either of his um, maybe normal reputations. Samurai, not welcome mm. here. Ghost, haven't heard of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> it's like, it, oh, um, Sakai. Like, what'd you say? What, did you just say Sakai? You're dead. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so. we'll, we'll just kill you now. No, yeah. So it, it's it's kind of a new a new thing for him to have to go under, which, like, I don't feel like he necessarily would try to i mean i think at the beginning of ghost of tsushima he pro- he probably like when he met yuna or things like that would be like i'm a samurai but as time went on he didn't use being a samurai or being the ghost to like influence people a lot except when they needed him to when right. it was like yuna or someone would push him and be like they need the ghost and you're like all right fine i'll be the ghost for them um so yeah just just kind of um a soft restart for him almost of he's got to go somewhere new yeah. and do it again. That's true. Yeah. Starting over from scratch uh, with people who don't know him. He's not used to that. Um, but yeah, so he, he departs for Iki Island. He kind of finds a boat, uh, a boatman who will uh, agree to take him there, but he finds out that Iki Island or the, the waters between Tsushima and Iki, they've been kind of, racked by storms lately like ever since the mongols showed up it's almost like they brought bad weather with them and so <laughs> it's it's been really hard for ships to make it to iki uh i mean between the storms and the mongol ships themselves like you've got basically a blockade of you know uh 10 story tall waves and uh and mongol fire arrows like between those you're not getting close to iki without a scratch so um it's it's kind of made clear like oh this is a, this is a treacherous trip but uh, for you Lord Sakai I will uh, yeah I'll t- I'll take you there it's fine <laughs> yes uh, so he does manage to get a ship there unfortunately uh, near the shore though it does crash he gets mm-hmm. shipwrecked um, and he loses his horse there is a part a part where I think maybe Jin gets thrown out of the boat before the boat finally crashes yeah. and you know washes up on shore and is trying to get his bearings. He finds the wrecked ship, and uh, he finds the guy that took him had died, but he, uh, I think there's footprints and stuff, and he's like, oh, my horse is still alive. Okay, I should go get my yeah. horse. Yeah, um, at this point, you're, I mean, your horse and uh, uh, Jin and his horse have been through a lot uh, at this point. <laughs> it's, uh, he's like, no, you know, my horse is special. I, I can't just leave him behind, and uh you eventually there's actually like a side quest where you reunite with your horse which is interesting but as you you know go throughout the course of that side quest and find your horse again you find out that your horse has a new uh superpower a new ability (laughs) where you can sort of you know order him to do a charge maneuver where he just plows down any enemies in front of him just you know charges forward and tramples and rams mongols and uh it can it's it's lethal it's a lethal charge maneuver which is pretty cool so new ability for uh for mounted mounted combat which is fun yeah i really like that reveal because um i I think in the first in the main game like i i mostly used my horse for transportation i didn't get into a lot of fights with my horse like Maybe if you were, like, walking around the island and you saw, like, those small patrols of, like, three to five guys, maybe occasionally I would ride up to them and, like, you know, jump off the horse onto one of them kind of thing. Uh-huh. But with this getting introduced, I was like, I'm going to hit everyone with my horse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. ho- horse combat became big. It'd be like, you know, I'd, like, charge through them. I'd come back. I'd, like, jump off and stab a yeah. guy. Like, that. it, it totally changed uh, some of that open area fighting for me, which was cool. Yeah, it's it's a new dynamic. Uh, it's, it's a new option for approaching fights with. Um, yeah, because like in the main game, I normally once I saw enemies, I'd jump right off the horse, get on my feet, and uh, get to business. And yeah, fighting from horseback didn't really have a whole lot of appeal to it up until you have the charge maneuver. So that's pretty cool. It's a new option. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I think that was a good move. Cause yeah, before I would like get close, hide in the grass, and like I don't know, use archery to like take a guy out and then like come in or something, you know. So. Right. Uh, I feel like this is cool that it gives you that option to just like, I don't know, Leroy Jenkins yourself into things. Like, (laughs) um, it's great. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So cool, cool ability. I think also even just this point in the game, something for me playing is I was like, wow, they're already adding a lot into this DLC. Like it's already has these multiple noticeably different things, which I thought was cool. I know that's what a DLC should do if it's doing like a good job, but it's like, just that they did these cool things already and you know this is only like a five-hour experience or something like 
pretty cool that they mm-hmm. did this much for something this small already. Yeah, definitely. And not long after that, Jen, uh, you know, he's he's kind of gotten a foothold on Iki, uh, kind of scouted the area a little bit, and he has figured out that the Eagle has their, you know, the main base of the Eagle tribe in actually the ruins or the remains of what was once called Fort Sakai, which is kind of like this little uh, this little stronghold that his father had built on Iki Island. So he finds out that's where the Eagle is, and he thinks, okay, well, let's do this, and I'm going to go straight in there and, uh, you know, take some heads, <laughs> take care of business, and find out what's going on. Uh, but the attack, it seems to go well at first, but then he gets sort of uh, ambushed and kind of smoked out. Like I think he gets hit with like uh, smoke bombs or you know sleeping gas or whatever. Uh, some sneaky, devious, underhanded bullshit happens. <laughs> he, <laughs> he gets he gets captured, unfortunately, and uh, comes face to face with the eagle herself. Yeah, I I feel like Jin must have um maybe had some overconfidence maybe from the first game well, that possibly. he would he would charge and do like an attack like this. Like I'm sure he like one hand thought like well if i just kill the eagle it'll be over the end so i'll just go right the most direct route but it's like dude like uh i don't know to charge into a fort like alone seems pretty yeah <laughs> unwise that might have been that might have been the old samurai teachings in him like oh we face our enemies head on let's be direct and you know not run from the fight i feel like the ghost might have been a little more inventive like climbed the walls like really reconned the whole place like oh wait hey they're 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 waiting behind that gate with smoke bombs like i should probably <laughs> avoid the gate i don't know but, yeah it's oh well. just yeah oh yeah it's okay i was just a little surprised i wondered if maybe <laughs> yeah. his like victories of like you know i took down uh the con and you know that kind of right, stuff yeah. if he just i don't know wasn't thinking quite straight but yeah like awesome. you said gets captured by the eagle um and what the eagle does is she poisons him she makes him drink this uh mysterious drink and is t- ask- she's asking him to join right become one of my shaman become one of my like lieutenants of sorts yeah, right sort of yeah when th- th- her whole deal with the poison and also when you read um sort of documents that are sort of letters from her to the people of Iki and Tsushima, like in all the representations of her, whether it's in a document or in person, she really has this, this vibe of someone who thinks that she's helping people by uh, scrambling their brains. And like the way she puts it when she poisons Jin is that the sacred medicine, quote unquote, uh, makes you face your deepest fears. And until you kind of purge yourself of these fears, you will, always live in darkness and if you you know accept the medicine and you know accept my blessings you can walk with me under the blessing of the great blue sky or it's all this like mumbo jumbo that's like pseudo spiritual you know i'm actually helping you sort of thing um and and yeah like i I, she does eventually sort of make make the pitch to Jin like you're you're gifted you can you know you can be one of my shamans if you uh if you just embrace the gift of the sacred medicine, yada, yada. Um, And obviously Jin's not interested. He sort of fights as much as he's able to, but eventually the poison sort of overwhelms him and he's kind of put into this deep dream state where he starts reliving some uh, memories that it seems like he had been trying to bury for years and not think about. And he's they're finally coming back to the surface. But uh, eventually this, you know, this uh, glimmer of hope arrives when we see him sort of in the Eagle's hut and uh, Yuna shows up and she sort of unties Jin and, you know, says, oh, I, I, you know, I, you, I heard or I heard you went to Iki. I thought you should you could use help. So I followed you. And, you know, she helps him escape. And in the process of them, you know, escaping from the Eagle's camp, uh, they, they get to like this this pit filled with spikes. And it reminds Jin of how his father died and. He tells Yuna about how the pirate, uh, you know, the pirate residents of Iki Island ambushed his father, Kazumasa, in what's called a place called Senjo Gorge. And so he, he shares these details with who he thinks is Yuna. But unfortunately, it turns out that uh, this whole scenario of being rescued by Yuna is actually just his imagination. And he has, in fact, been talking with the eagle this entire time. So... There's this uh, bait and bait and switch uh, reveal that 
No, you, uh, you, you know, the poison made you spill your soul to the eagle all about like your inner trauma and what happened to your father and the things that you're afraid of and, you know, haven't faced in a long, in a long time. Um, so the eagles basically pried him open and seen what's inside, which is not good. That's yeah. Real bad. Um, fortunately for Jin, he does end up, he manages to escape once he's not hallucinating. Right. And then he gets found by for Tenzo. real this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real this time. Um, <laughs> and he, uh, gets found and taken care of by a pirate named Tenzo who, um, is uh, I think a little bit apprehensive because he thinks you're a samurai kind of off right. the rip, but you're able to be like, Oh, like I'm a low level samurai. I'm not really anyone. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just some foot soldier from the mainland. So yeah, I think Tenzo asks Jin for his name and Jin almost says Jin Sakai, but he stops himself at the last second. And he, and he goes, <laughs> Jin from Yarikawa, <laughs> which, which is clever because Yarikawa is a, you know, a prefecture on Tsushima that, Mm -hmm. Uh, is kind of known for being a bit rebellious. Like the people from Yarakawa are kind of uh, independent spirits. So by saying he's from Yarakawa, that's kind of like a uh, a good cover because you know no one's going to think, oh, a guy from Yarakawa, that's you know going to be a lap dog of Lord Shimura or you know one of the Sakai dogs. You know, so mm -hmm. so Yarakawa is probably the best place for Jin to pretend to be from <laughs> at this point. Yeah. And that's where Yuna and her brother were from, right? So he's got That's like, true, yeah. So he actually knows about Yarikawa. It's not like, oh, I'm from there. And they're like, all right, what's the best place to eat there? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, who's, who's, uh, yeah, who was the founder? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, what parts? <laughs> what part are you from? Like, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, you know, the north. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, one, the place with the guy and the thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly no yeah i i agree totally great uh cover and cool meeting tenzo who um is someone who you meet who doesn't want to kill you right away he recognizes right. you're not a mongol but he's also like you're a stranger but he decides mm -hmm. all right i'm gonna help you out um he like fixes jen up and mm -hmm. um and is also pretty surprised he's seen a lot of other poisoned people with their minds lost um but jen is someone who right. didn't lose their mind and so he's um he kind of becomes your primary companion for the game here. Yeah. yeah, kind of a kind of an uneasy ally. Like uh Jin and Tenzo aren't really sure about each other yet, but mm -hmm. like you like you said, like, hey, you're not a Mongol, I'm not a Mongol. I have no quarrel with you. Um, you know, I'm actually here to help and you know, Tenzo, you know, he thinks, "Yeah, well, the last time a samurai came from Tsushima and said he wanted to help, uh, a lot of us ended up, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. burnt and, you know, yeah, uh, you know, hacked down in our in our villages, but you seem okay for now. So yeah, there's like this kind of tenuous alliance between a pirate and a samurai. Uh, and Tenzo agrees to take Jin to where some of the other raiders and you know just citizens of Iki, just you know people who live there, some of the locals are kind of hiding out, uh, trying to stay safe from the Mongols. Yep. And on the way there, they're they're kind of you know getting to know each other, feeling each other out. And they run into a Mongol patrol, and they kill them off. And Tenzo gets to see, okay, Jin's got some skills. Like, he's beat up. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's a worthy ally. Um, right. And so Tenzo's like, okay, well, um, I'm going to take you to the secret raider hideout. This is one of the only places on the island that haven't been found or taken over by the mm -hmm. eagle. So um, Tenzo takes you there. Um there was like one way to go in, but it um, basically the pirates are like really thorough in there. Uh, they like blow up the part of the mountain basically, so you can't go through yeah. the entrance, right? Yeah. So they have to go yeah, the, the long way. That's right. Yeah, the one main entrance uh, kind of gets discovered by Mongols, so the pirates uh, kind of collapse it. Mm -hmm. um, and Jin and Tenzo kill the Mongols, who almost found the hideout, but not quite. Uh, so the hideout is still safe, but there, there seems to be no way in. But uh, Tenzo talks about a, you know, very treacherous, uh, like kind of back way in that hasn't been used in a long time. And Jin's like, nah, it's okay. I can handle it. I'm pretty good at climbing. And <laughs> you know, this, he's actually early on in the DLC, Jin also learns this new uh, nifty trick for his grappling hook where you can like pull stuff instead of just, you know, grab onto stuff and climb. Oh, yeah, so, that's uh, cool. Yeah, that was pretty neat. So, yeah, they go through this little uh, like 
you know this I, I love the scenery just just as a quick side note like the the cliffs and coves that are kind of like part sheer rock face and part beach like mm-hmm. exposed to the open ocean air uh i i love that whole sequence of just picking your way through this cliff to get around to this really secluded cove on the back of the island hidden from sight it's really neat it was really fun yeah, uh, but yeah, that's that's where the main raider camp is. Uh, so they finally make their way in, and Jin gets to, uh, or is introduced to the raider leader, a woman named Fune. Yeah, and she was the leader back in the rebellion, back against uh, Jin's dad, and so yeah. she, I think, is like pretty battle hardened, and also mm. kind of viewing, oh, this is just another fight kind of thing. But Tenzo's like, hey, uh, I found this kind of random guy. He's actually pretty sweet at fighting. Um, <laughs> we've got our back up against the wall. I say we let him join us for now. Like, yeah. um, let's do this. And they're talking about a battle plan on attacking a ship. And Fune uh, has one idea that's kind of just a head-on attack that would probably get a lot of people killed. And Jin is like, hey, I've got another idea. If we do this like subtle route and you know attack the small like supply squad essentially that's coming to land and then pretend to be them and board the boat we can accomplish Mm -hmm. it and we probably won't lose that many people we should do this and so fune is like okay you've got like a good mind for this i'll give you a shot at it but you've got to do it you and tenzo have to lead it and if it goes wrong tenzo this is your fault kind of thing Mm -hmm. right yeah, uh, and this is like, this is honestly uh, just another Tuesday for Jin. Like he's mm-hmm. he's so used to fighting Mongols and finding kind of like uh, uh, sneaky but effective ways of you know subverting their strength and hitting them where it hurts. So mm-hmm. yeah, he's like, no, th- this is this is second nature to me. Don't don't worry about it. Uh, he and Tenzo, um, you know, immediately agree. Yeah, let's go together. We'll I'll meet you there and uh, we'll. Uh, yeah, we'll figure out a way onto the uh, Mongol ship and take it down. But uh, when Jin gets to sort of the the rendezvous point, he finds out that Tenzo is already there, and he's uh, Tenzo is sort of interrogating a Mongol captive for mm-hmm. for information. Uh, Tenzo and his men have uh, sort of ambushed some Mongol scouts and you know cleared the way to the to the boat. Um, and <sighs> Jin is about to sort of join in and help try and question the guy, but Tenzo just cuts him open right there and kills him. So, and Jin's like, well, what were you doing? We could have gotten information out of him. Tenzo says, oh, he talked enough. And <sighs> there's this interesting kind of shift in the dynamic. Like, the there's tension in the air suddenly between Tenzo and Jin. And, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, Jin, Tenzo looks at Jin with a strange look. And uh, Jin's like, well, what, what is it? And Tenzo says, uh, uh, we'll talk about it later. Uh, so they they go forward with the plan they you know make it onto the mongol ship uh burn it to the you know burn it to ash and you know sink it mm-hmm. so the, the the plan goes off without a hitch battle won uh they struck a blow against the eagle but at that point jin's like okay seriously what is up here <laughs> like start talking <laughs> what's going on with you and tenzo reveals that hey that uh mongol i was talking to earlier he said who you are you are jin sakai and you lied to me uh so you know, there's this private one-on-one between the two of them where, you know, Jin has to sort of kind of smooth things over. Like, I, I know what my father did here, but I'm not him. I am here to help, I promise. Uh, you know, you can't tell the other raiders because then our alliance falls apart and the eagle wins. Like, that's what the eagle wants is to keep mm-hmm. us fighting each other. And Tenzo reluctantly agrees to, you know, okay, I'll, I'll keep it to myself. I won't tell anyone else who you are until this is over. It's It's kind of like... It's kind of unspoken, but it's like we'll we'll deal with this later, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That it's sort of okay. You're right. The the enemy of my enemy is my friend, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they they the Tenzo reluctantly, yeah, like you said, agrees that let's fine. We'll deal with this later. Um, yeah. And I I think too that um, Jin was like the eagle probably told them that so they'd tell you um, oh yeah that's true like that you know because the eagle seems to be playing mind games both with the poison and without it is like absolutely you know fighting is and you know the uh super shamans are totally part of her game plan but it seems like just kind of a war that way versus like that's pretty different than Kutan khan 
in the main game who's you know main thing was just power he's just gonna wreck you that's like yeah. all he did was just hit harder almost so this is definitely yeah. a new kind of enemy definitely coat and Khan was was pretty devious like he he had he had tactics that weren't always direct but he he in general his strategy was just deal like inflict pain inflict damage somehow mm-hmm. but yeah the eagle is definitely a little more under uh, a little more indirect and it's definitely in her best interest to keep the people of Iki island uh divided because yep. if they if they unite against her she knows that's not good for her yeah totally you know um so with this kind of uh secret between them Jin and tenzo head back to uh fune to kind of report what happened and uh fune says that okay well i think the next big thing we need to do we've broken these like supply ships this is big i think we've got to take fort fort sakai let's just take the eagle mm-hmm. out then and there we could maybe end this um yeah. and so you lead an attack on fort sakai uh something that's pretty cool in this is some of my favorite scenes in the main game were when you'd have these battles where there'd be like 30 on 30 just like mayhem going on Uh uh-huh and you get that here and it's really really cool yeah it it, it can what was interesting about the sort of attack on fort sakai is you know it's sort of Jin mostly on his own at first but like and you kind of have a choice of how to get in there and you know start taking out the guards and freeing the prisoners and as you start releasing you know the raiders that the mongols had captured you end up with this scenario where yeah you can you can start going full full ham and just uh you know break stealth and just overwhelm the mongols and uh clear out fort sakai from the inside which is pretty cool i you know classic uh ghost of tsushima action uh, stuff that i remember from the first game or from the main game and it was cool but what was what was even better you finally uh, end up uh you know facing down the eagles basically second in command like the guy in charge of right underneath her i don't remember his name like dog shown or something like that some some, some guy who uh i think he runs from Jin like twice though <laughs> like you you fight him and you 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 know you spank him pretty bad you like you know make him bleed and hurt him and he like gives up on the duel and runs away and you have to chase him down and fight him again uh but before before Jin finally finishes him off uh the eagle's second command sort of imparts some final words some last words to him you know she she wants you you know she wants you to serve her she wants you to be her shaman and you know Jin's like uh good luck with that uh no thank you <laughs> and cut, cuts his head off uh and yeah so at the end Sakai uh Fort Sakai is liberated and Fune and her raiders and Tenzo they they've gained dozens of new allies and new uh new people to help them fight which uh they're going to need because of, <laughs> coming up next is a uh an even bigger confrontation with the eagle even bigger battle mm-hmm. yeah this is huge uh this is a big big win for Jin and company and also i guess something that has happened throughout this along the way is Jin will have these like vision spells along yeah. the way too where he'll like I don't know, be talking with Tenzo and then zone out for two minutes. And right. he's like, oh, you had the poison vision again, didn't you? And he's like, yeah. And yeah. Like, like we mentioned at the beginning, it's largely of this moment when his dad gets killed. Because um, we find out the Jin was there. That right. uh, Against the pirates, there's this part where Jin's like managed to hide in like a, a small house. And just outside of it, his dad like falls down and says, help me, Jin. And then someone comes behind him and slits his throat. And Jin just sits there. And Jin's like, I don't know, 10 or something. He's really young. Yeah, he's like maybe in his early teens. Like, he's like an adolescent. He's not, he's not like, he's definitely not an adult yet, but he's not a tiny kid either. So he's, he probably would have been old enough to do something. But in his memories, he's always paralyzed by fear. Like, he's just not sure what to do. And he hesitates and, uh, it's it's clear from these visions and from even even kind of the way he refers to how his father died in the main game, uh, Jin feels guilty about this. This is a huge source of regret and guilt for him. And yeah, like you said, when it's kind of leading up to this big main confrontation between the Raiders and the Eagle that Jin is sort of preparing for, 
when it gets to that point, the visions start getting worse and worse, and they're kind of coming on more commonly and uh, d- happening with greater frequency. But also, they're they're more real. Like, it, it's it's stuff that starts appearing to Jin as if it's actually there. It's not just, you know, he's not just remembering things anymore. He's actually starting to see things wherever he is. So it's getting bad. And <laughs> it's kind of like the ongoing conversation between Jin and Tenzo. It's like, are you the poison's killing you. Like, are, are you going to be okay? Are you going to be able to fight? And of course, Jen's always, you know, insistent that no, I'm fine. I can fight. Don't worry about me. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's starting to get pretty bad, but the, the Raiders agree. And Jen, you know, agrees to kind of fight with them that they need to have this kind of diversionary method of drawing the Eagle out into the open so that they can fight her on their terms. And they choose to have this battle in the ruins of this village that, Kazumasa and his samurai, uh, Jin's father, originally burned down and pillaged years ago when they invaded Iki Island. So it's kind of a uh, kind of symbolic. Like the village that the samurai devastated years ago will be the site of a samurai and his raider allies fighting against other invaders. So yeah, history repeating itself a little bit. That's it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, and and, and Jin like recognizing the advantage even though it mm-hmm. like has a lot of personal hurt to him like yeah. you know we've got a um we've got to do this kind of thing and um in this kind of period of game planning too Jin realizes that it was actually Tenzo who killed his dad um because yeah. the person who killed his dad when he slit his throat said may your death benefit all beings and mm-hmm. there's a time where uh, Jin and Tenzo are out killing Mongols, and Jin or Tenzo says the same thing, uh-huh. and Jin's like, "Oh fuck, I know that phrase." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a, it dawns on him immediately, and he has this epiphany: like, "It was you," and he just kind of rounds on Tenzo and confronts him. And uh, at first, Tenzo denies it, but uh, yeah, eventually he kind of comes out and says, "Yeah, okay, I did it. I was the one who killed Kazumasa Sakai because he." he butchered my my friends and family and neighbors like you know he the the things he did to us they were unforgivable he had to die and so uh there's this yeah it, it's all coming out now and so it's 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 this moment where jin you know the player doesn't make this choice i don't think the game gives you this choice as a player but jin the character definitely makes a decision here of i i really want to kill this man more than anything but uh now's not the time uh will Again, kind of like when when Tenzo earlier agreed to uh, keep Jin's identity secret, Jin sort of decides this is something we'll deal with later. Uh, well, uh, yeah, well, I, uh, I'm not done with you yet, <laughs> but we'll we'll settle this after uh, the Eagle's been dealt with. Yeah, totally. And, and I think along the way too, in this game planning section, you you kind of get from Tenzo that he's got some of like. It wasn't like I was the great warrior that killed your dad. Like I was right. the guy that was there and it worked out. <laughs> like um... Yeah, I'm just I'm just the dude that finished the job because up until then, like the the raiders back then they they lured Kazumasa into like a gorge to ambush him and his like his legs were broken by that point. He'd already like he took down dozens of raiders with him. Like he didn't go quietly. He'd already killed a bunch of Tenzo's friends by the time his legs gave out and he was crawling toward Jin and he was kind of like at the mercy of whoever came along and yeah it just so happened Tenzo's the one who finished the job so it was kind of like not a, not a epic showdown <laughs> where Tenzo proved the greater warrior it's just no he, he just put Kazumasa out of his misery really yep yeah that that's really where where that was and then also this other side I think that Jin gets more of about his dad like when Tenzo explains, like, your dad killed these people. He killed this village. He killed a bunch of kids here. Like, different things like that. And Mm -hmm. I think showing this other side of, like, sure, your dad was, like, conquering the island and restoring order. But he wasn't, like, a good person uh, in that. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that Jin's getting some information from the other side that maybe he'd forgotten or didn't know or, you know, whatever. Of, like, it wasn't, like your dad came in and was like, Hey, Iki Island, don't be so bad. And <laughs> you know, they were like, nah, fuck you. Like, instead it was like, he was doing brutal shit to everyone kind of like, yeah. And in, in restoring order, kind of the, restoring order, quote unquote, like, um, 
yeah. and I think that was good for Jin to hear that information while he's like, all right, we've got to be reluctant allies still. Right. I I think a, a, ma- a big theme, and you know, we'll probably circle back to this later, but one of the huge things about this DLC chapter, the story of Iki Island, is that Jin is learning kind of that his father maybe wasn't the best example of a samurai for him to follow. Like he, he, I, he idolized his father in a lot of ways and tried to live up to him. And when his father was still alive, when Jin was a, was, you know, a teenager, basically he felt inadequate around his, around his father and wanted to live up to his example. But yeah, after talking with Tenzo and other people who lived on Iki, he's realizing no, Kazumasa didn't come to Iki Island to uh, build hospitals and schools and roads. No, he <laughs> right. came to just put some people to the sword and really like be a brutal conqueror. And that's what people see him as. That's what people remember him as. So it's like you know that's uh, it, it, it's it's facing that age old question of like you know do, do the sins of the father get passed on to the son and what how does the son sort of reconcile that legacy and rise above it. And yeah, uh, learning that the uh, ruthless, lawless, you know, uh, criminals who who live on Iki, like, you know, they're just they're also just people sometimes. And, you know, they don't always deserve what the samurai do to them. And uh, no, it's it's really cool to have that kind of back and forth between, you know, like Jin's perspective of you know you were you were pirates you were killers and murderers and thieves and you know you had you had to be reined in somehow and you know tenzo's perspective of you you burned our houses while we slept and stuff like that so it's just this back and forth and like you know no uh gray this gray area that exists there and it's it's fun to watch uh uh jen sort of face that history yeah i think i think they really really do a great job with that here um and so, kind of all of this stuff going on for Jin, visions included, um, they are surveying kind of, okay, where's this final battle spot going to be? Where can we mm-hmm. trap the eagle? And he realizes it's the same place. Let's do yeah. this here. Because um, I think that in his visions, too, when he um, spoke into the eagle, he revealed he saw his dad die and it was an ambush and stuff, but it wasn't really all the details of it and so he's like i think we can get her with this you guys had the right battle plan and it worked let's use it here i think it will yeah. work again kind of thing um and so they do you end up um again similar to the fort sakai battle like you end up with a ton of uh you know 30 v 30 stuff going on for a minute um and mm-hmm. you finally go like through this gorge there's a couple paths and uh, there's a part where it like splits off and Fune and the rest of the raiders go one way and then you and Tenzo go the other way and you arrive at the beach and uh, the eagle's there and I think some foot soldiers are there too mm-hmm. and so Tenzo takes on the foot soldiers you head to the eagle you have another kind of boss fight here um, yeah. this one I thought was pretty challenging I, I died quite a bit on this boss fight I don't know about you I I actually, I'm pretty sure I beat it first try. Um, wow. Well done. <laughs> I'm impressed. Humble brag, I guess. <laughs> no, but I'm I, impressed. I, thank you. Yeah, it's not even like, it, it was tricky though. There were definitely some curveballs that the eagle throws at you. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't die. Um, I came close a couple times though, uh, where, you know, like she'll she'll change her uh, her attack pattern and, you know, like the whole time it's, you know, the uh, the landscape seems to shift like Jin's kind of her his visions are still kind of affecting him even during the fight uh, so yeah it was it was tough it was it was fun though it was an interesting boss battle it was a little different it's like not quite like the other uh, duels that Jin has with some of the straw hat bosses or Koten Khan himself uh, so yeah it was it was pretty cool I, I had fun with it yeah it was different the part that kept tripping me up is I think maybe when you knock her past like half health or maybe even two thirds Mm -hmm. health and it gets to like a vision spot where she can like one hit kill you almost. Um, that's the part where I got like stuck. (laughs) Yeah. Um, a a little bit where I would just, yeah, would just get wrecked on those. So I had to get, I had to work a little harder to get better at, you know, dodging and agility and, um, yeah. Not getting greedy, and you know, because the <laughs> yeah. Ghost of Tsushima one hundred percent says, "Don't get greedy. Like, take the shots yeah. you can get. Don't 
you know, get greedy and try to get that extra one because that's when you get hit. Um, you got to be defensive sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't. You've got to be defensive. You got to be mindful. You got to, you know, like take the short slashes or whatever rather than like, mm-hmm. even though you want to bring down the bring down like the hammer kind of thing it's like it says no don't do that you're gonna get killed um which is good and i like that uh style in there but this one i felt like it disciplined me into doing it the right way which is good (laughs) it was good uh and i enjoyed the boss battle for sure yeah um it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. and you do manage to take out the eagle and uh also in the boss battle too you've got your hallucination um where you get kind of the full scene, right? Going back to your dad. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, kind of see it clearly for the first time in a long time. I think Jin's memories of this moment have been sort of clouded by time and distorted a little bit by trauma, but whether it's because of the Eagle's medicine or just, he's been kind of reliving the whole scenario a lot lately. Um, he finally sees the entire situation and he sort of sees his father again too. And kind of like kind of has a conversation with him almost where he, he's, he's uh, my, my, my big takeaway from this was he's getting closure finally. And he's allowing himself to say and hear the things he wanted to say to his father and hear from his father, but never got a chance to, um, things like, you know, I, all I ever wanted was to make you proud. Uh, and you know, I, but I felt like such a failure around you. And I, I went, cause Jin's ma, uh, Jin's mother died of, of a, of a disease a few years, but prior to the whole Iki Island thing when he was, a, when he was a kid. And so we, we get the sense that without, uh, Jin's mother around, his father just didn't really know how to raise him. You know what you, you get this kind of uh, you get this kind of conversation where uh, Kazumasa kind of says something along the lines of like, you know, without your mother around, I, I you know, I was left with a, a child who had so much pain and hurt inside of him. And I, I didn't know how to help you. All I knew was how to be a samurai, so I raised a samurai. So it's kind of like his his father knew how to be a warrior, but not how to be a parent, if that makes sense. So that's kind of like where the gaps kind of come into it. And Jin sort of finally realizes, like, it wasn't his fault, you know. Uh, he doesn't need to carry that the weight of that, that guilt. And so in a twisted way, it's kind of like the eagle finally gets what she wanted, uh, which was for... Jin to face down his turmoil and his his fear and forgive himself, release himself of the of that darkness. And so, in the end, she kind of gets what she wanted, and Jin finally gives himself closure. And the visions sort of start to subside after that. So, by by killing the eagle, yeah, Jin sort of it purges himself of all these uh, all these horrible memories and. Uh, kind of negative self-talk i guess in the form of memories so no yeah this is big because i feel like like you said there it's um he i guess on one hand like in his mind what he's afraid of is like his dad wasn't the best dad he just Mm -hmm. wasn't he he taught him to be a samurai and then i feel like through his in interactions with tenzo he realizes his dad wasn't really the best samurai either. Not not because right. he got defeated in battle, but because he did brutal shit that was wrong. Yeah. And I I, right. I think Jin seeing that's not what a samurai should do. Like, um, to buy the I don't know letter or something of the samurai code, and he's like, no, like the samurai should be there to help all people, however that is, kind of thing. And I think that's what Jin's like becoming and has become as time goes yeah. sort of deal um and so when the battle ends he goes and talks to tenzo who's hurt and is like we're good yeah. you know uh, yeah i think Jin approaches tenzo who's wounded from the fight and there's this moment where tenzo expects like he, he's he is absolutely sure that Jin's sword is going to come swinging at his skull any second now. He's like waiting for it. Like, okay, go ahead, get it over with. You know, I, I know, I know how it is. I know, I know what the deal is. I killed your father. 
I, you know, have this coming, go ahead and get it over with. And Jin sort of says, no, no, it's, I'm not, you're not my enemy. And, uh, and also I'm not my father. So, you know, there's, there's all this like forgiveness going on. There's this acceptance happening. And, uh, it's, it was a lot. It was, it was very, it was very touching. I enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. I thought that was really, really great. Um, after that, he does head back to the Pirate Cove and kind of reunites with Fune also. She also knows who Jin is, but I think, again, that same theme just basically becomes, like, overwhelmed through the island of, you're not your dad. You can be different than that. Mm-hmm. You are. You helped us free our island. Like, we're good, Jin Sakai kind of thing, yeah. which is cool. Like, um, just this, I don't know, arc of redemption through that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And they give you some stuff to do afterwards, too. Like, just like in the main game, there's still, like, side quests you can do and stuff like that. But that kind of uh-huh. really wraps yeah. Iki. Yeah, that's uh, that's the main story of Iki Island. And, uh, yeah, just... I... Yeah, like I said, the, the other goodies you can get along the way, like the new set of armor, the uh, the horse armor, uh, there's all these, like, little Easter eggs. And, you know, as a, just as a whole, it's a, it's an amazing package between the uh, main story, all the side quests, all the little hidden stuff you can find. It's, it's a, great, a great experience, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess from here we could move on to any other stuff we might want to talk about that didn't come up yeah. along the way. I think the biggest thing for me that this has is just... I'm so stoked for uh, what I assume will be Ghost of Tsushima 2 or if it has a yeah. new name, you know, like whatever it will be. Um, I'm all Me in. Too. I want more gin. I want more of this kind of game. Like uh, Sucker Punch made something super special and this added to it. Um, totally worthwhile yeah. D- DLC. I know sometimes DLC can be kind of take it or leave it. This is totally a go get it for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I would I would say just um, if, if you if you enjoyed the main game, there, there's really no reason not to check out Iki Island. Like if you, if you just want more of what you love about Ghost of Tsushima. And that's why I feel like this is just a prime example of just excellent DLC, like the right way to do DLC, which is, you know, it's just a new chapter of a game you already know and love, but with you know new things to experience, new twists on the familiar gameplay. It's just, I liked A, give me more of A. Like, I don't necessarily need, you know, B or C. Like, I, I you know, I can just take more of uh, what I already know and love. And, uh, but, you know, make it fresh, you know, give me something new to experience. And, um, you know, for the story angle, I, I just thought it was really neat how in the main game of Ghost of Tsushima, the story mostly dealt with Jin's relationship with his uncle, Lord Shimura, and how he struggles with the expectations of the samurai code and doing the right thing and... Uh, not just defending the people, but winning the battles the right way, and yada, yada, yada. Um, but Iki Island's story showed us that those struggles go a lot deeper. Like, he's been having those, you know, those internal conflicts for a long time. You know, even from a very young age, Jin felt inadequate around Kazumasa Sakai because there was so much to live up to. And I, I loved the, uh, some of the, one of the, you know, side activities you can do are like just little, uh, landscapes like you know landmarks where you find Sakai banners like the clan banners and you have these vivid memories of Jin interacting with his father and sort of learning certain lessons from that and I, I just one one thing I really enjoyed was learning kind of the Sakai <clears throat> learning the Sakai motto like we are the lightning in the storm we are the avalanche that topples the mountain that is clan Sakai. We, we, we live at, we live on the battlefield. Like that's where we belong. And it was just so cool. And there are these, there are these things that Jin took from his father that helped him. Like, you know, Kazumasa made Jin a good warrior for sure, or at least helped form him into the peerless swordsman that Jin Sakai is now. But there are also things that Jin is learning. Like I don't need to carry on from, from Kazumasa. There's, things that I'm that I didn't learn from him and that's a good thing like you know Kazumasa's very rigid interpretation of of Bushido and the samurai code what it means to be a samurai and all that stuff so um I just I just really enjoyed the whole process of Jin going through um these these uh internal decisions and facing up to his father's legacy I 
the you know the the theme of forgiveness here was i think delivered really well in general like forgiving your family of forgiving people you thought were your enemies and even especially forgiving yourself things that you things that you things that you place on your like burdens you place on yourself that you don't necessarily need to and uh as my favorite rap group uh, run the jewels say uh you can't pick up no crown holding what's holding you down he's yeah so Jin learning to forgive himself and move on from, you know, what he blamed himself for. It was it was it was done really well, fun to experience. I think tied into the gameplay and the story really well. So yeah, just some of the visions were crazy, like unexpected. Like I think I was just walking somewhere on my horse, just going going, you know, somewhere on Iki Island, going to the next quest or whatever, and I come across a bridge, and suddenly that bridge turns into the bridge from the beginning of the main game where Jin fights Koten Khan for the first time and loses. So it's like the visions will come at you without warning and they're random. Like they, they're just kind of randomly scattered throughout the island and you just stumble across them. It's like, oh shit, is this going to be a cutscene? Am I like <laughs> about to be thrown into a main quest and not, you know, not expecting it? But no, it's just random memories that were kind of woven throughout the uh, game world. Just so much cool stuff packed into mm-hmm. one little DLC chapter very well done oh yeah yeah i i really agree i feel like they i I like the point you pulled with that forgiveness theme too i think that's really big especially in such a a brutal game really right you know like everything that's happening in this game is so brutal but then to have a theme like forgiveness be such a an important piece in this uh like this journey wouldn't be good or right if he just took revenge on everything <laughs> right <laughs> he'd be like we yeah. just like killed tenzo at the end and then was like cool i'm gonna i'm gonna do what my dad couldn't um <laughs> i'm gonna he, finish the job and conquer all of Iki Island. <laughs> right you'd be like well that yeah. sucks like that's, that's you know <laughs> like seem right at all yeah <laughs> right but instead this and uh, like uh yeah, I, I like the. I feel like it comes here. I think especially for forgiveness, like you said, but even in the main game too of Jin just having a lot of unlikely allies or like people, um, like Jin, Jin teams up with people who he thinks can help him for the greater good, kind of thing, and learns to I don't know break rules or whatever mm-hmm. to do that and all that. I don't know. I I I really really am impressed by all of this and really like what they've done. Um, it's pretty cool yeah. stuff. Definitely. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's about all I had. Did you have anything else you wanted to hit up before uh, wrapping up? No, I think I've, uh, I think I've, I've gushed enough. I think I've covered all the angles. Uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, those were my thoughts. I think. Um, good stuff. Can't recommend it enough. Yeah, if you like the main game, uh, it's definitely worth it. Check out Eki Island. Yeah, hundred percent. Um. Cool. I've, we've got a couple people who wrote in uh, about their thoughts on the game, so we'll just hit those up real quick. Um, Daniel right. on Twitter said, I've played a majority of uh, Iki Island. They added a couple new things, uh, that is, um, but it's mostly more of the same, which is a compliment. Uh, yeah. I agree. This is uh, just kind of a boosted version of Ghost of Tsushima. If you like Ghost of Tsushima, <laughs> again, like we've been saying, go play this. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tom on Twitter said, Loved it. Fun and beautiful addition to the story. The hallucinations got a little tiresome, though. I, I can I can see that. Uh, <laughs> they It was like a very recurring theme. Uh, it was it, It's kind of like if you don't like the hallucinations or if they got annoying to you, uh, that might drag the experience down a little bit for you. Well, I, 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 I like the... I mean, I, I didn't mind the hallucinations as much as I normally do in a game like... Um, I don't know, like the Far Cry series, for example. Like, one thing I don't like about Far Cry, uh, especially the last few games, like, they keep having things in the game, like, take agency away from the player character. Like, they keep putting you in, like, drug trips and making you, like, like just putting you in the backseat for, for a lot of the game. And uh, that was kind of annoying. So, like, from that perspective, I can get that. Yeah, the hallucinations might be... A little annoying to some people. I can understand that. Yeah, I agree. I could understand that. I didn't feel annoyed by them, but um, I could definitely see it. They were frequent enough that it wasn't um, like, oh, it happened three times and each time it was impactful. Instead, it happened more than that, but they were still yeah. pretty short. So it was like... Yeah, it's, it's good they were at least short. 
were yeah. pretty quick. And I think did give you that like insight into Jin's mind, which makes sense. Like some yeah. of them were just like that scene of his dad getting killed again and again, and sometimes it was like three seconds more of it or something. Like it wasn't. For sure. Um, they weren't always as big, but yeah, yeah. Can do- can totally see that though. Can understand that. Um, last up, we got Eli on Twitter who said really great, expanded a lot on some of the characters, and added a real. Uh, a really great twist on a certain character uh, that I won't name because I don't want to spoil it. But yes, um, imagine they're talking about Tenzo. I agree. I like that spoiler a lot or that uh, surprise yeah. as well. Um, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I I hadn't like guessed it would happen uh, before it had. So when it was revealed, I was like, like I I thought you know like Tenzo didn't make any qualms about that he was there during the Raiders. Like he he was, but I didn't really think myself of like oh he could be the one that killed Jin's dad so when you got that reveal I was like ooh that's hard this <laughs> is going to be hard for everyone to deal with <laughs> yeah yeah it, it definitely was awkward it was like I, I i it didn't occur to me at all until like uh i don't know um i guess one one tip off i kind of got was in the main game when Jin remembers how his father died the uh the line may your death benefit all beings doesn't come up like unless I'm remembering incorrectly, but I think that in the main game, when Jin has that memory, that doesn't get said. So it's like, that's a new wrinkle to the memory that only happens in the DLC. And then, I don't know, something about that line made me think like, oh, that's that's pretty distinctive. I feel like I'm going to meet someone and they're going to say that. <laughs> and it turned out to be Tenzo. So I, I had a feeling that something kind of kind of sketchy was going on with that new line in the in the memory, but... Yeah, I, I didn't completely see that coming, so I was still pretty caught off guard by it. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Um, awesome. Well, yeah, again, thanks for coming on to talk about Iki Island, Connor. This is great. I'm super stoked. My pleasure. We got to yeah. do this. Um, again, if people want to like uh, find you online or check out your stuff, uh, where should they go? Oh, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter uh, at connor howard vo that's spelled c-o-n-n-e-r howard vo i'm also a uh, hobbyist voice actor i've done a couple of uh couple of audio dramas a visual novel here and there uh, i did an audiobook last year you know i just i do i do here here and there you know when i can um uh you can actually i actually have a website connor howard vo.com all my demos and work samples are there as well um and yeah i normally just sort of uh tweet about you know random stuff i'm either you know busy with or amused by uh and yeah loreparty.com is uh our website we 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 may be refreshing our web uh, web presence in the near future so uh you can find some of our episodes there but some of the newer ones are only on uh spotify but yeah on uh twitter the lore party twitter is pretty active too you can find all of our new stuff there as well lore underscore party I also occasionally tw- uh, stream on Twitch, uh, Twitch, uh, sorry, twitch.tv slash lore underscore party. Uh, we kind of have a lore party channel we stream on sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty much all over the place, but wherever uh, wherever you find me, come say hi. I, uh, I don't bite. I'm an open book. <laughs> so yeah, awesome. Yeah, lots of things to uh, that Connor's got his hands in. Definitely go check those <laughs> things out. Uh, yep. super cool that's there um, for us if you want to uh, interact on Twitter uh, we're at Story Ever Pod. our website's the greatest story ever played.com. there we've got a backlog of uh, I don't know 150 plus episodes including one on Ghost of Tsushima the main game so if you want to hear nice. more about Ghost uh, go check that out um, uh, we've got a Patreon at patreon.com slash the greatest story ever played there for as a uh, dollar per month as little you can get access to monthly bonus episodes we do um, things like uh, our favorite games from childhood or uh, I talked about my favorite Netflix series recently things like that so if that sounds like nice. something you'd want check that out and um, yeah if you'd like to rate and view us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get podcasts that would mean a lot to uh, I don't know be able to help enjoy games with more people together I think that's something uh, really cool it's getting to share these things with people so uh, yeah would be cool if you want to do that and uh, yeah that'll be our episode and we'll uh, see you next time